Welcome to another edition of Business Redefined. As always, your weekly most comprehensive look at the world of business and economics. After an intense week of budget and fiscal affairs, we want to slow pedal and take a break and look at the inspiring stories of women in enterprise. We start off with the story of Rhoda Nyerwai, the founder and CEO of Care Prime General Merchants, dealers in all matters paper and printing material. An accountant by training, she went into this business back in 2006. Just how did she get started? Yes. I did uh, some accounts, but I only worked for two, two years. Then I quit the job because I wanted to take care of, take care of my kids and uh, concentrate on, you know, well-being of my kids. So, until uh, my last born was uh, of age to go to nursery school. That's when I felt uh, I had uh, potential in me yeah? to come out now from the house as a housewife to do business as the other women, because it was in me, the passion was big. So I knew the challenges of uh, starting a business. One is to have capital. This capital, I did not have as much because I only had, had uh, 100,000 shillings from uh, Chamas, eh? the merry-go-round. So that's how I began my story. So with now the 100,000 shillings, I came now to Nairobi town to look for space where I could start my business. Now the challenge of uh, goodwill, the challenges of uh, space, you know, location, Wherever I was going to look for, for space, I was getting a uh, goodwill of 1.5 million, 1 million, 800,000, and I only had 100,000, okay? So, when I was almost giving up, eh, that's when I realized that I can even take a first floor, second floor room, where I could just start small. So then I got a space, first floor, a very small, tiny sp uh, shop, uh, where I was, I paid a goodwill of 50,000 Kenya shilling. Now with the 100,000 I had, 50,000 was gone, goodwill. I was left with 50. So I did the shelves with the 20,000 Kenya shilling. After doing the shelves, I paid rent for that particular month, 10,000. So I was left with 20,000. With this 20,000, I remember I had uh, a friend who was doing stationery shop at Gariyama Road. Eh? Her name is Rose or Dub White Line. She has been a mentor. She showed me the way. I went, sat down with her. I told her, please, madam, I have secured a space at this place, at this location. Kindly assist me with it. With some paper I sell, and then I'll be paying, paying you at the end of the day. So I acted as a broker. I could go get her paper, put in my shop, sell, get small margin, take her back, the money. Many micro, small and medium-sized businesses will approach a potential lender for debt or an investor for an equity stake. And one of the common challenges that they face is that they are not investment ready. And that's because they don't keep their books in proper state. So I asked Rodanya Rai just how exactly did she go about her bookkeeping? Because I had some background of some accounts, I knew the only way I could survive in the market is by making my statement clean. So I up opened an account with ABSA, then it was uh, Barclays. Eh? So I opened an account with, uh, with, with ABSA, and uh, whatever I could sell every day, I could bank. Okay? Then in the morning, I could go withdraw, run to the white line. She could give me now another load to come and sell, and then I bank. It continued like that for about six months. You have to have the, the, day, the daily ledger, okay? You have to have a, a balance sheet, a good balance sheet, trial balance, that two type of records, eh? Or we, 
you can have a, a, an income and an expenditure account which explains how you are you make your, your your losses or your profits yeah so if you present all those properly kept and well balanced when you take them to to, the, to their bank definitely they'll be able to sit down check vis-a-vis -vis your banking records okay your banking records do you bank every day do you issue checks which if, which bounces you know when you have a clean b banking record and you are Bookkeeping is okay, Ex and especially if you are a woman, <laughs> definitely they will be able to assist. So Rhoda Nyerwai has started her venture with just 100,000 shillings in seed funding, and one of the oft-cited challenges for many SMEs as micro, small and medium-sized businesses is the issue of scalability of their businesses once they take off. How did she go about this? 21. I felt the market was started opening for me. There were, the customers started coming in large numbers. So I felt I needed a partner. A person who I could go sit down with, listen to me, and be ready to work with me. That's when I approached now the ABSA, then Barclays. I sat with the relationship manager. I told him, this is my record. This is my market, this is my shop, how can you assist me? Then, he gave me a very good product. There are so many products. You know, people fear loans, yet there are so many products in banks which can fit your problem at that particular time. Instead of taking these long-term loans, eh, he suggested I, give, I be given uh, uh, something called uh, a revolving fund. A revolving fund is this type of uh, facility you are given a certain period of time, like four months only. Okay? You are given like uh, two million. Go buy, sell, bring our money back, remain with your profit. Okay? That is how they assisted me grow from zero to hero. Okay? So this revolving fund started with, started with two million. Okay, this two million, I could now afford to buy a full container from these uh, local suppliers. A full container of a particular paper, come, sell, okay? If you make like 400,000 profit, for example, one from one container, you pay back 100,000 to the bank, you are left with 300,000. Isn't, isn't that that help? That's a good margin. It's good margin. So that is how I began. Slowly, slowly, slowly. Until now, I went to the bank again. You know, most of us women, we are marginalized. Why? Because we don't have uh, assets. Okay? We know like lands belong to men. Houses belongs to men. Okay? <laughs> so there's no way you'll have a title D and take the bank as a collateral and be assisted now in a big way. So we sat down with, the, with my relationship manager again. I told him now my business is growing. I need more assistance. So by then, there was this product of uh, unsecured. Okay, and secured loan. Right now, I think they are giving up to six million and secured. By then, they were given, giving even up to ten million and secured. That is, you don't have an, to present an asset. You don't have to present any title deed. You just go. What will stand for you is your statement yeah. and your accounts. Whoever does a business has to be formal. That is the challenge most of us have. You start a business, you are not formal. By formal I mean you don't put proper books of records. Eh? When you have proper books of records, you present to the bank. Sit with the relationship manager. He will always listen to you and give you right, the right product that will suit your business at that particular time. Actually, they gave me unsecured of four million. I secured a space, 
and paid goodwill of four million. Okay? I even have, uh, I have that uh, record in my office. Eh? So they gave me goodwill to go and secure now a bigger space. Actually, I took a basement, not this one. I took a basement somewhere and they, they, they did the, that for me. So from there, I could now, remember when I started, I was operating alone. I did not have any worker. I, w I started just me. I could go from rose, come, sell, like that, alone. So when I started, <coughs> started uh, bringing in, you know, people who knows about business well, okay? Those are, I, I started having like auditors, people who could come and audit, even if it's once a per month, I could have now qualified accountant, I, you know, <coughs> qualified, qualified uh, staff. Most of my staff are graduates, so they are, they, they are knowledgeable. So I started now growing, I started growing now even bigger. <laughs> Normally, all these papers you see, we get them from, they are gotten from outside the country. We do not have paper in Kenya. That is one big, the one biggest challenge. Kenya doesn't have any meal. And the one we have, like Webuye, they are doing recycled paper. So that's a big challenge. That whatever paper we sell comes from outside the country. When we, when uh, Absa assisted me, I could be able now to import one, two containers like that, come sell like that. But mostly because I cannot be able to import all types of paper, I source it from local uh, suppliers who are very big and huge. Those are my major suppliers. Most of my products, I get them from industrial area. There's that, uh, you know, uh, transport, things like that. But not many, but the most, the major thing is the rent. Securing space in Nairobi town, rent is very high, very high. So that is one of the biggest challenge. But when business is there, we don't see it as a, a problem. We take a quick break on Business We Define. We shall be back with a lot more on the story of Roda Nyarua, including how COVID-19 disrupted her business and how she managed to tie through the crisis. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the second part of this edition of Business We Define, where we are looking at women in enterprise, and in particular, the story of Roda Nyarwai, the founder and chief executive officer of Care Prime General Merchants. In the first part, we looked at her seed funding and accelerating capital. In the second part, we begin by asking, how was COVID-19 in terms of disrupting her business, and how did she tie through the crisis? You know, when COVID came, eh, uh, some of, most of my customers, or some of my customers, we sell, we extend some credit facilities to them. You see, now when COVID came, they were not able to pay back because whatever materials they had prepared for schools and the schools were closed, you know, they went into waste, like examination papers, which had those dates and the year. They cannot be sold in this year because of the dates. So most of those went into waste. So those, uh, those creditors, uh, you know, it made it hard for me because I have to pay now the suppliers. When the COVID came, I went sat down with my manager. I told him, now listen, Dennis, I've come. There, there, there is this problem. COVID has come. You have given me a revolving fund. Okay, schools have been closed. So there's no way I can survive. Whenever you present your case and talk, they are human beings. Okay, they listened my case, and they, they, they gave us this something called moratorium, whereby they, they expanded eh, the, the, the payment uh, period. So every three months I could go, 
present myself because the moratorium was running for three months. I could go back, tell them I'm not ready. So we extend another three months. I'm not ready. We another three, until now, today, that the things are now running normal back. Eh? So we can now start talking again and say, how are we going to do these things back again? And, uh, advised, especially women, because women are marginalized. And I've been a leader of women in church, and I know what women go through. They go a lot and they cry, they, uh, you know, in the houses alone. You know, when you come out dressed and with a lipstick, nobody knows your problem. But women have so many challenges. What I would advise them is to follow your passion. Don't see somebody has opened a, a clothes selling shop, you go next and open another. Follow your heart, the desire which is inside your heart. If you follow that one, start small. Don't dis despise us at the humble beginning. Start small, put your records right. Don't shy off. Yeah? Don't go to these uh, funny funny chamas whereby you are, you are given money and then next time they come to carry your, your cooking jikos and uh, your, your utensils. Yeah? Look for that partner who is stable, like a good bank, like ABSA. Present your case there. I've started small. I'm selling uh, sukumawiki. I'm selling fish. I'm selling this. This is my record. Yeah? Have that boldness always when you present your case to the bank. In this day and age, we look at business from the triple bottom line standpoint, people, profits, and the planet. I asked Rhoda Nyarwai, how does she handle the necessity of social impact from her business? Actually, River Road in 2006, you could not come and uh, pass. It was very insecure because of pickpocketers. When I came and uh, when I felt I had now, uh, you know, muscle, I collected them, the boys. I told them, now you'll be offloading my lorries and make sure you report to me on what you are doing. They are, you'll see them outside there. They come, they offload. At the end of the day, I give them everybody 300 shillings per day to go home with. Yeah. Okay? Now, they were no more. They did not have now time to pickpocket. Eh? They did not have time to drink those funny, funny things. They are busy. Yeah? A time when we are busy, we can offload a lot. Yeah? So, that is what makes me happy. When I see them raising kids, when, they, when I see them, you know, they stop now sleeping from here, Mikokoteni. They, they are now, they own, they have homes. Yeah. Even if they have written very small, tiny rooms, at least they have homes, they have wives. Yeah? And I'm happy when they tell me, Mom, my wife has, have delivered, has delivered a kid. Come, let's let, give me some money, go get her from Kenyatta. I feel happy. Yeah. That's how I'm, I feel I'm giving back to the society. I feel good like when I'm here and uh, I have my workers, you know, they have, they have families to take care of, they have children to educate. I feel happy. That is actually my joy. That's what drives me, not to get a lot of money. I, have, I feel good. Yes. This is not the end. My vision is big. My vision is big. And... Uh, I'm thinking of now even, uh, <laughs> I'm even thinking of now having even international lenders, not only ABSA, international lenders where we can team and at least I can, uh, I see myself uh, maybe in five years to come having a very big uh, go down, having my, my shitter machine, the big machines, yeah? Having uh, employed like uh, 500 workers, that is my vision, big, yeah? I'm looking, I'm, I'm seeing a vision whereby you as the nation, you don't have to import any paper. I'll be supplying paper to nation, yeah? Even APSA, I'm looking forward when they give me this big tender to supply 
every paper that is used in every bank, every branch. Yeah, I'm looking to being that uh, person. So my future is bright and my vision is big. I've not even executed a quarter. And that takes us to the close of Business Redefined. Join us next time as we continue with more on this series of women in enterprise. Thank you.